we are now down to the fourth presentation of the day. Um, we have the financial viability of coffee processing technologies, and this will be presented by Dr. Helen Martinez of the Philippine Center for Post Harvest Development and Mechanization. Thank you, ma'am. Before I will proceed, may I know who are you? Who of you here are coffee farmers? Can I have your hand or uh, development workers working on coffee? Allah. <laughs> okay. I would try my best to make my presentation uh, understandable because when I lecture to development workers. Uh, supporting coffee or helping coffee farmers, hindi na ako masyadong mag-expound, mag, uh, no? Pero para sa inyo, alang-alang sa inyo, itatry ko na maintindihan nyo ako. Okay. So, by the way, uh, my office is an attached agency of the Department of Agriculture. It's called the Philippine Center for Post-Harvest Development and Mechanization. We are mandated to generate, develop, and commercialize post-harvest and mechanization technologies. So itong isi-share ko sa inyo ngayon ay isang mature technology ng Filmec, which is a post-harvest system integrated into a business model for farmer groups. Ni. I have trouble with my Okay. Let's first look at the I have problem. <laughs> Meron tayong problema sa coffee industry. Masarap uminom ng kape, di po ba? Pero do you know how much we have in the country in terms of volume? Coffee in the Philippines is, in terms of production, is very low. While the demand... Okay. So the Philippines consumes coffee more than it produces. In 2013, 70% of our coffee is imported. At present, the government imports around 100 to 135 metric tons of coffee just to meet the market demand. Kung mapapansin nyo, kahit sa inyong mga probinsya, munisipyo, ang daming nagsusulputan na coffee shops. Kasi millennials are towards hindi sila umiinom ng mga nakakalasing, naglalasing sila sa coffee shops. Nagko umiinom sila, ibig kong sabihin ng kape. Okay, social sila. Tingnan nyo ang Starbucks, sino ang nandun? Mga millennials. So they love drinking coffee. And therefore, every farmer who will invest on coffee to plant coffee will surely have a market. However, because of so much demand with low supply, we are costing the government around 7 billion, which could have been, kung tayo lang sana ang nagpo-produce nito, nakuha na po ng ating mga farmers. To address the problem, the Department of Agriculture Regional Field Offices, so the High Value Develop Commercial Development Program, in collaboration with other agencies like DTI, DOST, or DO, DOLE, or DAR, Provide the needed support to farmers to expand production, reduce losses, and add value to coffee. So, they provided appropriate post-harvest and supposed to be coffee equipment and facilities and services. Sad to say, despite all the support, productivity of the coffee farmers are still low and the rate of utilization of these installed coffee processing facilities and equipment is either low or very low. Therefore, there is no, hindi po tayo gaano makahanap ng kumikitang coffee enterprise. May kape, yes. Ang tanong, kumikita ba? Mamaya na lang tayo mag-usap. Okay. 
So, let's go back a little bit, especially for those who are not familiar with coffee. According to Coffee Org, there are two ways or two means na ma-insure natin na we produce quality coffee. One is the method of processing. It is the single most important factor contributing to the flavor profile of coffee. Tedious po kasi mag-harvest at mag-process ng kape. At yung paggawa mo na nun ay yun ang magbibigay halaga at presyo ng kape ng isang farmer group. Another is the microclimate and soil. So kung ang kape ay tinanim sa sagada, tinanim sa tuktok ng mayat apo, o at an elevation proper for coffee production, mas masarap talaga siya because meron na siyang microclimate add-on. No? E wala nang laban doon sa baba. Pero makakalaban yung nasa baba a little bit kung maganda silang mag-process and they go for quality. Okay. What are the parts of coffee? We have the berry. When the berry is the pulp, we have the parchment. If the part, parchment is dried, then you have the dried parchment. Sometimes farmers don't like to pulp. Therefore, they do the method which they harvest and then they immediately dry. That's why we get the dried berries. And after that, either they sell it already to the traders or they avail for hauling in the local community haulers or hauling services so that they can sell their coffee beans. So, yung dulo, depende na ngayon kung may kakayahan ang grupo. Kung nabigyan sila ng roaster or grinder, then they proceed to roasted, selling roasted coffee. Bakit natin ito maintindihan? Because bawat pagbabago ng anyo ng kape natin, may kaakibat siyang equipment requirement. So, when we say wet method, this is usually done by Arabica farmers. The, the farmers harvest the ripe berry. This is supposed to be the recommended practice. Then they, they pulp it using a pulper. They ferment it at 10 to 20 hours or overnight, usually overnight. no? And then they dry. Dapat alam nila ang kanilang moisture content. Supposed to be 10 to 12 or 11 to 12 Ang MC, so beyond 12, basa yun, pag bumaba dyan, na over dry na. Then they will dry it using elevated dryers and then dihal at saka palang makuha yung green bean. So as I've said, mahaba ang process. The dry method, the farmer, especially the robust na farmers, they get the berries. But the farmer, Robusta, are getting it through stripping method. Therefore, they get the mature as well as the hilaw. The immature ones, the green and the red, or the mature. And then they dry it. They no longer know what MC they are selling. And they bring it to local uh, haulers in the community to haul it. At saka pa lang may green bean. Sometimes, kung may utang na sila, sa mga local trader, diretsyo na, na na-capture na ang kanilang kape. So, another is, ito yung uh, medyo a little bit lalagyan mo ng uh, add-on na activity wherein you use a robusta coffee and then you go through the process of pulp natural or semi-wet. In this process, you get the mature coffee, you depulp it before you dry, and then at saka mo palang ihal, at saka mo palang magkaroon ng coffee bean. Kung titingnan mo bawat prosesong ito, madali naman pong gawin ng farmer. Pero, kumusta naman kung kaya ba nilang isa-isa na meron silang mga equipment? Because they wait for government to have it as free, it will be very costly for government. Therefore, the government organized organizations and cooperatives of coffee 
para magkaroon sila ng tinatawag nating integrated marketing and processing. So, Filmic promotes the adoption of a system for Arabica and Robusta. It is a set of match coffee facilities and equipment which can produce quality green bean. This was done in 24 uh, as early as 2005 by our researchers from the Socioeconomic Policy Research Division. So they were able to uh, show na through this study na kung susundin lang yung nire-recommend na mga practices and appropriate equipment, ang farmer ay kikita dahil makakapagproduce siya ng quality coffee. Ang coffee kasi, pag sinabi mong quality, tinitest po ito ng mga coffee connoisseurs na nagagawa ng cupping. So, hindi siya po pwedeng ipaglalaban mo na maglulupasay ka sa kamaganda ang coffee mo. Pag hindi siya makapasa sa cupping, goodbye, you will go to very low price. Alam niyo ang difference from Inman in Mindanao? That's 60 pesos at the local trader, 110 pesos for Nestle, or even higher for coffee shops, for green bean. So, we are introducing the pulpers, dryers, hauler, moisture meter, sorting tables na gagamitin ng mga coffee organizations para mahawakan nila yung maganda nilang kape at maproduce nila ito. Now, may mga issues po. Sa farm level, ito pong nakikita namin. Farmers sell their coffee at local traders either or at dried berry form or green bean. Wala naman problema. Gusto naman nila kaagad kumita. Pero hindi na sila nagpa-process into haling. No? Wala na yung added value. Ang problema, low quality sila kasi hindi pinagahalo nila ang hilaw at saka ang matured berry. Pampadami siguro ng timbang. Or, there is a mismatch of a coffee equipment provided by agencies. Meaning, nandoon yung pulper, nasa center, ang kape naman nasa bundok. Eh, wala namang farmer magdadala sa center kasi malayo. Okay. And then, po, capacity naman, sobrang liit. Hindi makaka-match doon sa requirement. There is also what we saw na poor drying practice. Do you know that coffee that you drink, I'm sorry, is dried anywhere? Katabi ng minsan ng mga manok, no? nasa lupa. Minsan okay naman, naka-elevate, nakabilao, okay yon. Kaya lang pag umulan, kamusta naman, ditakbo-takbo. So, posibleng magmold. Meron kaming nakita, ho, hindi sa project ko ha, umikot kami. Isang buwan na nagdadry ng kape, kamusta naman kaya ang mold doon? Nakakatakot. So, kailangan talaga nating turuan ng farmer ng ba tamang teknolohiya. And then, there is what we call for Arabica farmers. Before, na wala pang intervention ang mga agency, they use wooden pulpers which cause so much, so much broken. And then, wala silang pera. As usual, katayo din naman, pareho lang. Insufficient capital. And then, hindi nila alam kung ang MC ng kanilang binibentang kape ay tama na o hindi. Okay. Now, let's go to co-op level of operation. O sige, masaya na si farmer. Binigyan naman ni DA ng equipment. Binigyan din ng DTI. O masaya na sila. O let us look at their operation. Hindi ang co-op ang dami ng dryer sa dami ng kape. Kaya may, maski may dryer, kunti lang capacity. And therefore, the farmer is not supported talaga. So, ang ginagawa natin, kailangan mamaya ipakiano natin kung paano gagawin para mas ma mahaba, malawak ang ma-reach. There's also lack of business management and entrepreneurial skills of farmers. May nagsabi sa akin, kaya nga sila farmer eh, kasi ayaw din naman sila Ay naman magnegosyo, parating nagmamadali. Hindi po kaya, I disagree. 
If they are taught and properly mentored, they can become effective entrepreneurs. I tell you, they are. We have some of them na nagbago. Although, wala silang alam paano magnegosyo o paano nila gagawin, patakbuhin ang kanilang prose, pagpuproseso. Minsan, pag naandun na mga taga DA, mga taga DATI, ang ganda tingnan, may kape, pero if you look further, kunti lang talaga yung volume at kunti lang yung gumagamit. Kasi, farmer members lack commitment to sell their raw coffee or their raw materials to the co-op and utilize or patronize the installed facilities. They also don't know how to keep records and, of course, insufficient capital to buy their own coffee. So what we do, we harmonize existing efforts of other agencies. We do workshops in order that we can, through partnerships, be able to uh, have convergence of effort and co-sharing. So, yun ang entrada na namin sa mga regions. Then, we, we encourage the farmers through our partners to strengthen both the farm level and the co-op level of operation based on, binanggit ko kanina na mga baseline gaps. And then, we introduce some business models. Ang cop na pang farmer. And then, we train them to become effective entrepreneurs through talagang coach mo siya na matuto siyang mamili, magbenta, at mag-record, at mag magkaroon ng confidence tapang magiging negosyante. And then, doon pa lang namin i-integrate ang aming teknolohiya. Kasi sistema ito. Sasabihin namin, magkakasundo tayo from the farm level to the co-op para meron tayong traceability of quality. Without that, wala tayong pinag-uusapang quality dito. Kasi naglulukohan lang. No? So, sumusunod naman sila. Meron kaming pinasusunod na sistema sa Robusta. Meron din kaming pinasusunod na sistema sa Arabica. Then, hindi kami tumitigil dyan. We do market linkaging. So, para talagang makita ni Parmer na pagigihirapan niya, makaka-reach ng medyo kakaibang presyo ng kanyang market. Kung sa, ano nga, jack, jack, kita, jackpot eh, sa ano yon sa Ilocano. Kung sa Bisaya naman, ah, di, di ko kakita, di ko muto, oh. No? May Bisaya dito, Bisaya po ako. So, ala, kailangan ipakita talaga. They have to learn by doing it. And then, eto ngayon, nag-ano kami, through, thank you for the Bureau of Agriculture Research for funding this project, we have at least eight sites in the Philippines, four of these is funded by BAR. So we have one in CAR, three in CAR, one in Central Luzon, one in Western Visayas, one in, it's not ARM, it's Sultan Kodarat, Region 12. One in Calabarzon, or it's in Cabuyao, Laguna. And in Butuan City. So this is the recommended, this is the technology of Filmet. It is called the Community-Based Coffee Post-Harvest and Processing Model, model for Arabica Coffee. Anong ginagawa namin? We first introduced it to a co-op and require them to cluster their farmers. Clustering is important because we have limited resources. You cluster them, and once they are clustered, depending kung saan ang kape nila, silang magkakasundong farmer para sila ang madaling magkakaintindihan, then gagawin nila ito. They will pick the right berry only, or the matured berries, red berries only. And then they pulp it and ferment it and produce the dried parchment. They have to use, dito muna kayo tumingin, ano? They have to use all-weather dryers kasi sa Arabica, maliliit lang naman ang kanilang hina-harvest. And then, I assure you, they can produce the quality green bean. Can you imagine at 
300 to 450, pwede silang bilhin. Bin pa lang yun. Okay. Now, kailangan, kung marami masyado, depende sa lugar, they can use an all-weather dryer or a multi-commodity solar tunnel dryer. They haul it, sort it, then they have a temporary storage before they can sell. Not so long. Sandaling-sandali lang. And then the one that is roasting, grinding, and packaging is a value-adding. Value-adding na. So, kinukompleto natin yung value chain. Now, in coffee, medyo hindi po umiinom ang mga sosyal ng panis na kape. So, panis, hindi naman talaga ang pan panis, pero ang mga sosyal gusto nila, drink the co freshly ground coffee. The one that they can smell. If you get inside Starbucks, o yung mga, hindi ko naman siya kinopromote, ha? Yung mga mama, masarap pasukin, bakit siya masarap pasukin? Bakit ka naiinggan yung pasukin doon? Because of the smell of the coffee aroma. Because they grind their coffee there. That's why people are drawn to get inside coffee shops. No? Yun ang sikreto. So, value adding na yun para sa mga farmer. Kasi ang farmer, kung malayo, hindi ka agad naiinom yung freshly ground. Kaya ang ini-encourage natin talaga, mag-produce lang ng bean, pera na. Basta quality. Okay? So, let's go to the main ano. Ano ang kailangan sa farm level? We say, kailangan at least may isang pulper ang bawat four farmers covering one hectare each. Pwede silang maghihiram-hiram. And then, they need to put up all-weather dryer. Mas maganda kung tigitig isa sila. Together with the regions, we provide We encourage the region to provide the plastic sheet, yung UV-stabilized plastic sheets, para ma-protect ang kanilang kape. They can accommodate two hectare of harvest uh, kasi isang all-weather dryer has the capacity of 150 kilogram and the fabrication cost is around 7,000 pesos only. So, we try to analyze. This is an actual data, no? At assuming uh, ang kanilang ginagawa ay one pulper at uh, two hectares ang coverage, partial budget, pra, uh, partial budget analysis, we compare the wooden pulper plus sun drying lang, yung ginagawa ng traditional practice ng farmer, as against the use of recommended pulper, saka use of all-weather dryer. Tingnan nyo po itong 3,682.91. That's the added income na makukuha ni farmer pag gagawin niya yung improved practice. So, ito yung aming inaingan nyo. Sige na, pagtyagaan, huwag niya kasing pagsalalo-haluin yung hilaw at tinog. Then you can have that income. At the co-op level naman, sinasabi natin, their need, kailangan meron silang one hauler, one unit of hauler. They can still another, ha, uh, they can have another dryer kasi minsan, hindi maiiwasan, dadalhin ni farmer doon, basa pa. So, i-redry. And then, one moisture meter, there will be three re required sorting tables, three units. At least, may processing center sila. A roaster, a grinder, and a sealer with those specifications and prices. Based on those, tiningnan namin for investment analysis if ever bilihin nila lahat. By the way, by 2019 onwards, according to High Value Commercial Crops Program, wala nang libre. So, importante ang business plan, ang feasibility study para masabi natin kung sino man yung magpapautang kasi ipapalong siya, nakikita ang farmer sa ganong klaseng pamamaraan and combination equipment. So in this, dapat meron kang annual sales of 10,000 packs of roasted coffee at 250 kg, 200 pesos ang benta mo per pack. And then, pwede rin na 
nag-i-start kang 4,000 kilos of good quality dried parchment. No? Doon nagsisimula. Kasi ang mga Arabica farmer talaga, they pulp their coffee and they sell it sometimes in a form of parchment. So if this is your business, we can assure you the business is feasible because the NPV, IRR, payback period, and BCR shows a feasible or a viable business. Another model is the dry method, which is ginagawa ng robusta farmer. Paano? Again, ika-cluster natin sila, and then they will harvest hinog or mature. Napakahirap po itong ituro sa robusta farmer, lalo sa Mindanao. Sabihin, ma'am, paghalo-halo, 70 pesos, 60. Pag hindi halo, 80. Halo na lang. Oo nga naman, sa presyong 10, 20. Kasi sa kaisipan nila, pag kunin ng hilaw, added, timbang. Hindi nila alam, pag i-float siya, nawawala. Eh, hindi sila nalugi, nalugi yung bumili. Eh, kamusta naman ang industriyo ng kape ng Pilipinas? Walang asenso. So, magtulong-tulong talaga tayo para umasenso. So, dahil dyan, ganun din, pina, pinamamahagi ng DA ang aming multi-commodity solar tunnel dryer. Kasi ang dryer na yan can dry coffee or cacao or other vegetables and crops na mabilis. No? Tanungin nyo na lang kami later or mahahaba ni lecture ko. So, again, you proceed it, you hull, you sort, and then more value adding to complete the value chain. Okay, let's go to the financial analysis. Dito sa farm level, nahirapan kami. We cannot get a good partial budget analysis for the farmer. Kasi talagang mahirap. Ang aming data hindi pa siya conclusive. Kaya wala kami. Wala kaming maipakita result. But at the co-op level, having this in the co-op, like one hauler, one all-weather, samahan ng MCSTD, moisture meter, sorting tables, a processing center, roster grinder and seller, sealer, oh, ito po yung kanyang analysis. Okay? At annual sales of 10,000 packs, uh, 250 kilogram roasted coffee, sold at 150 per pack. By the way, mamaya po, tumikim po kayo doon sa amin, meron pong patikim, from Kabuyaw, Laguna, they can assure you of quality, walang mold. So, and then, raw materials in a form of, or they will sell or buy the raw materials in a form of fresh berry at 6,500 kilos. Total of 6,500 kilos pala, both at 30 pesos per kilo, tapos yung dried berry, both at 120 per kilo. So, yan yung lalabas na financial analysis sa mga ekonomista, hindi ko na kailangan ipaliliwanag. Basta ganyan yung lumabas na figures, isan lang ibig sabihin, kumikita ang kanilang negosyo. Okay. Sa pagpapatunay, noong last year, tatlo sa aming tinutulungan ay nanalo sa Kape Pilipino Green Coffee Bean Competition. Kaya may pagmamalaki namin na pinatitikin din na kape doon ay malinis at nakaka, naka, nakapasa sa coffee competition. Philippines nga lang ito, Philippines. That's all. Thank you. Meron pala akong video pwedeng pa-play para ma-summarize ang lecture. Tapos uwi na, wala nang tanong. <laughs> Joke.
Katulad po nito, ito po mga naka-float nito. Iyan po ang nagiging black beans. Pag hindi na kasama sa ating pagdidipalbot na tuyo, na iro, dun po na naman ang masama ang kape. Hindi po natin makukuha yung premium ano niya, taste niya. Ito po, pano yung black beans na po niya. Kaya dapat po yan, inaalis na siya. May kalat po niya. Thank you po. So, may mga question po tayo. Calling all coffee lovers. May mga katanungan po ba tayo? So, atid pong i-appreciate ang mga kape dahil mahirap po itong i-process bago makarating sa Starbucks or kung saan man na favorite coffee shop ninyo. So, wala po talaga? Wala po tayong mga katanungan? Yes, ma'am. Hi, good afternoon, ma'am. My question is on the uh, between the dry and wet method in processing Arabica and Robusta. What makes the difference? Why Robusta it has to follow the dry, drying first, then the, uh, before the hauling, then the other one, Arabica, wet method? Like, does it have something to do with the kind of beans? You answer your question, ma'am. It has something to do with the kind of bean. The Arabica coffee has to be fermented kasi before, mas dapat siyang ma-ferment muna bago siya i-dry. Tapos, madali siyang i-pulp actually. But many farmers do not uh, practice uh, pulping of Robusta coffee kasi maliban sa magkakaiba ang kanyang sizes, Mahirap siyang ipalp kasi makunat. So, kaya ang na-mention ko lang dito, dry process. Kasi robusta, even at dry method, provided you dry it properly using appropriate dryers, you can still produce good quality coffee. However, we also would not discourage farmers who would like to pulp it so that they can dry the parchment. Because of course, na wala na yung pulp, it's easier for them to dry. It now depends on your market, what your market requires. Kasi ang gusto natin, mabalik lahat ang beneficyo sa farmer as sa magandang presyo. Any other questions po? Wala na po. 